Hey, it's Sean Hart with Post Purchase Pro, and I just run into my longtime pal, Paul Barron. Paul from House Barron, I always say. <laughs> and we're in Sydney, Australia, yeah. at the second annual Southern Seller Fest. Were you here last year? No. Okay, good. I, w I, was, <laughs> I was in Australia last year. I was at the um, Amazon Collective in Yarra Oh, Valley. Amazon Collective for Regina. Yeah, Regina, okay, cool. down in uh, Yarra Valley. I do Melbourne. remember you being here uh, in Australia yeah. last year. So um, at this event, uh, Jamie and Michael, in my opinion, Paul, have done a phenomenal job. You've put on events. I've been putting on events for years. It's not an easy thing it's to stressful. do. And so what I want to do is kind of let these guys know what a, what a fantastic job they've done. Talk about what your favorite part is about the structure and, and the event itself. And then if there's anything that you would change, a little bit of feedback. Okay. Yeah, so um, I think that they've done a fantastic job. Uh, the organization and the community and, and the, the production value is really good. Um, I mean, the, everything is top notch. I mean, we got a red carpet over here. You can't see it. It's off camera. We got this amazing kind of networking area. So they're really getting high value to the, to the sponsors and to the to the attendees. Yep. Um, you know, bringing in you know experts from all over the world, and a lot of these guys have. Well, there's a couple I know for sure they never spoken before, but like their content has been absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. So content wise has been incredible. And the community. Community and the has networking's been, been second to none. So I, I completely agree. This is again being my second time in Australia in the last two years. Um, key differentiator that I know or I, I have observed between the Aussies and the and the Americans is well, Aussies are just warmer. Like they're more <laughs> open. And they live in sunshine. Well they're just less guarded. Like in general they're just like the community they're very communally Communal, communally driven. I, I With see the that. abundance mindset is super apparent yeah. versus scarcity because exactly. one of the things that stands out to me, Paul, is that a lot of the sellers that I'm talking to have absolutely no reservations about sharing their most closely guarded secrets right. with a complete stranger in the sense of community. This gives me goosebumps yeah, thinking about it, which is really not yeah. typical when you go to an event. Most people are holding their cards close. Right. You know, I want to see yours, but I'm not showing you mine type of thing. Right. And to me, that's been I mean, it's been heartwarming and humbling to see that. Yeah. And, you know, it almost becomes competitive, Paul, where if someone shares, you almost want to outdo them and say, let me outgive you. Look at this. Yeah. I mean, do you feel that way? I love it. Yeah. I mean, there's been a couple things that have been shared from stage that were like, I can't believe that guy said that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, that's like the juiciest hack I've heard all year. Like, nice. crazy. So as far as uh, ROI goes... You know, they're paying, what, one to $2,000 to come here as an attendee oh. and flying a couple hours maybe across country. What do you think? I mean, 10X, 20X, what, what, do, you, what do you think you're going to see? I mean, you're, you're a speaker. I'm just saying as, as a seller. I said beyond 20X. I mean, honestly, the, the challenge is for the attendees what and when. So what are you going to put into action and when are you going to do it? Because there's so many, there's so many things that you can take away from here. Right. But if you implement everything in a good, you know, sequential fashion, you know, as, if you're like me, it's really easy to get disorganized and like you have like <laughs> information overload. But if you're, if you are very intentional and you come from here, go home, spend the first day or two, a week when you get home, look through your notes and decide, okay, what are the top 10 things that I'm going to do? Then you narrow that down. What is the number one most important thing that I'm going to do? And you do that until your top 10 list is done. Then you go through your list and do another top 10 list. Now, what am I going to do? What is the one thing on this list I'm going to do? And you don't stop until it's done or until it's implemented. Like uh, Jamie said this morning, one brick at a time. Exactly. So so if there was one thing that you would change, if it's perfect, it's perfect. But what, what do you think uh, would make this a little bit better so that they can improve each other? <laughs> Probably just a later start on the last day because of the party. <laughs> like this is one thing that I heard from last year too. Danny, Danny likes to throw it down, you know. So I didn't attend. I went to bed at four and I woke up at three a.m. Four p.m. Yeah, I went to bed at four. Oh going to take a, take a nap to come to the party last night. And you fell asleep. I slept for eleven hours. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> so fortunately, I I was a good boy. Um, well, and by good boy, I mean I was kicked out of a bar. But <laughs> well, fortunately, uh, no, I don't party, so I don't happened, feel like I missed anything. No, what happened was is we were there and I just see a group of people walking by. And I just hopped the fence to go get them because they're not hearing me. And apparently, you can't do that in Australia. <laughs> I, I didn't realize. I'm mean, like, well, you, you I got your Tim Tam though. Well, yeah, I got. And I mean, I gave my beer that I had. I had one beer, and it was like drank like that much. And so I gave it to my. I gave it to David. Okay. And but anyway, it was it was good because I was tired anyway, and they, they kind of twisted my arm to come out. But that so would be the Jamie one thing. Jamie and Michael are standing on the other side here. Okay. So what yeah. would you say to them? Yeah, have a later start, boys. Um, later start on this. Later on start the on last, last day. day or. I mean, 
it's, it's a balance. When you're running an event, you need to balance networking and, and content. And I think that the, generally speaking, events overswing on the content and underswing on the networking. Um, you know, the, the Fiji event that I did, it was, we only had two speakers per day. And wow, like for about an hour a piece? Yep, an hour a piece at the start. And so the, the, the start of the day, I mean, it was completely different though. Mm -hmm. And like, this is a big event. Mine was intentionally small. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, what are you doing and who are you serving? Right. Um, you know, so that event was very designed with high intentionality on networking. Um, so, so I, for Michael and Jamie, two thumbs up, one thumb up. I say two we, thumbs up. Two thumbs I mean, up. Here's the thing: like, you can always improve. There's always. And I think obviously they're not afraid to improve because no, I've talked to people who were here last year, and they said last year was top notch. This year is even better. Yeah. So they did great. Um, they're they're on the right track. I had the opportunity to meet both of the wives this morning at yeah. breakfast and. And they're kind of oh, the secret sauce amazing. behind the organization. So um, in your quick two sentence elevator pitch for an Amazon seller out there who's thinking about maybe traveling to Australia or within Australia to come to this event and spend the money and the time and effort, what can you say to get someone off the fence? Yeah, first of all, if you're looking to travel, it's worth it. Like, honestly, if you are looking to travel, if you're a sponsor looking to sponsor an event, like this is top freaking notch. Um, so if you're looking to travel, come if you're looking to sponsor you need to and if you're in Australia why the hell wouldn't you be here <laughs> like seriously like there's guys that have come from freaking Estonia that's like basically the opposite end of the globe <laughs> True. it's like the, like the, the amount of time that he Cal had to drive like drive and fly and transport to get here makes my 24 hours look like chicken <laughs> yeah. feed doesn't right it? So, so for for me Paul actually half I talked to Jamie this morning and the attendees here, when you're talking about sponsorships, because there are attendees, there are sponsors, there are speakers, half of the room yesterday converted is going to is going to uh, join my follow-up call on Zoom wow. next week. Half. I'm not doing that. When I gave him the when I gave him the numbers, he said he said, "Do you realize that's half of the room?" You okay. know, I don't I don't want to throw the attendance records out there just in case that's private. Oh, okay, offline then. Right. This will be like a little. I'm going to. My yeah. goal is to beat you. All right, you're not going to get that done. I'm, oh, I'm, I will. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the best. I'm so going to beat you <laughs> unless you're giving away thousand dollar bills. <laughs> All right, so get out of your comfort zone. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Get out here to Southern Seller Fest. Meet other sellers. Share, yes. and they will, it will also be returned to you. Right, Paul? Excellent. Any last words? That's it. Hey, you know what? My last words, you have purpose and meaning, and there is only one of you on the planet. So focus on not just the money making, but what is the money making helping you do? Because money is empty. Money doesn't make you happy. Money is a tool. And it if could you, be a distraction, too. It could be a distraction. But at the end of the rainbow, if you're not happy at the start of the rainbow and you think that at the end of the rainbow you're going to be happy, you're not. So focus on you. What is your purpose? What is your meaning in life? Because you have value and you have meaning, and there's only one of you ever. So live it. Paul Barron, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Yeah.